the idea of a systemic approach. Like permaculture is that. Huh? <laughs> Hi, I'm Stefan. I'm the founder of Anova Floresta, and I will uh, present here a video about uh, the permaculture we are doing here. Anova Floresta is a center for teaching permaculture, it's a school. This land where we are was desertified, the soil dead, and we applied various methods of reforestation and soil regeneration in a tropical climate. Proud of the success and willing to share all the theoretical and technical knowledge acquired during these years, we propose now two different PDCs, one in English and one in Portuguese from Brazil. Our PDC, Permaculture Design Course, certificate of three weeks, combines 80 hours of theory and pedagogical practice. It takes into account the latest discoveries in soil microbiology and plant microbiome and gives a preponderant place to carbon farming with agroforestry and bioshare production, water management and soil regeneration. So why doing practice as well? Why three weeks instead of two weeks, which is a general uh, proposition of, uh, for doing PDC? Is because here we, we create a bridge between the fundamentals of systemic approach biomimicry, closed loop, site design, process management, and various practical activities like agroforestry, green building, animal care, landscaping, and gardening. This bridge between the theory and the practice is very important. And even in practice, we explain why we do uh, such practice. What are the fundamentals? I want to present here an example of site design with a 4G platform used by the students during the PDC a concept I have developed based on the systemic approach, the main foundation of permaculture methodology. The idea is about a realistic context and ease of manipulation to do this design. So we'll travel now to Austria with Lauren, a PDC student. Uh, we will talk about this process of site design using the platform. Are you ready? Let's have a look. Welcome <laughs> to our little introduction. So what we have here is a 3D platform and with that we kind of want to demonstrate how materials and energy flows within a specific area. Um, yeah, the 3D really helps to see where, for example, water would go, um, what areas would be shaded by the sun, if we have a mountainous area just like this one. Um, I'm going to talk you guys through um, our process of thinking and what we've already kind of constructed in year one. We get really strong winds. Also the sun rises here and sets there. We kind of have to think where do we get the most sun because we don't have a lot of time in the year with a lot of sun. Obviously here it's quite easy to see the water would come from the mountains and would go down areas like this. So the water would always go down here or would go down here which is really important for our second step when we want to build a house. We would want to build it below the pond so that the na uh, water naturally flows down to my house and I don't need any, uh, any more energy to get water to my house. And also what we kept in mind in section one, so really close to the house where I want to um, grow my vegetables, it's also really easy to get water to this area where I would probably have my vegetables. And since the water is going down this way, it's super easy and this whole area will probably be pretty wet. So in the next year or in the next two years when I want to build or grow vegetables, this would be a really good and easy area close to my house with a lot of water and also a lot of sun that I could build vegetables. So um, thinking about you too and realizing that I was gonna want um, animals in the future, we went back to year one and arranged a few things. So for example, I put a few trees on this side because this is going to be my animal space in the future. Um, I thought about the animal barn being here um, just so it's easily accessible from the house. And therefore I'm going to need a few trees that could potentially feed the animals, give the animals some shade. So thinking about my year two, the only thing that I um, was going back to and, it, and changed is to put the vegetable garden 
from this side closer to my house. Okay, so we are in year three now. Um, some of the trees have grown. Um, first thing I would do is plant some new trees just along where my water flow is gonna be. What I've also done is build a little dry toilet as you can see here with this. And also we built it behind the house. So you can see the wind goes in this direction. So we don't have the smell in front of the house or flowing into the house. So we, we built it behind the house. I did this in year three, just so I have like two years of time to see where my water flows naturally, where I need it the most, which areas are already really wet on their own, um, how the water flows in extreme situations, on days with a lot of rain, or in spring when all the snow melts from the mountains. So I waited, I waited two years to, to really um, draw some conclusions on where, where to build it best. And this is what I've done after two years of watching over my site. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we are in year four now. And um, first of what I did is lead the water in a little bit more of a curly line. Um, I've built some ponds along the way just to keep the water as long as possible on my ground. I planted some more trees. My animals have moved in finally, so this is the animal area. And last not but, le but not least, I built some terraces just to make use of, of the hillside. I planted some small trees at the bottom to fix it but not take away any sunlight and some higher trees in the back to fixate the ground as well. And back here I'm gonna do some terraces as well in the future. Um, yeah. I think it was a busy year <laughs> and I think we're done for now. So I will present some of the elements of this platform. First of all, it's very easy to do. Uh, it's just sand, uh, then making a landscape. Uh, uh, the miniatures here, they were done with plaster and paint, but you can buy them in a shop uh, for, for children, uh, animals, trees, uh, houses, whatever. The advantage of this kind of platform is that it's very easy to build. At the contrary of uh, 2D uh, drawing, it uh, really shows the landscape and uh, it put the designer in a realistic context, showing uh, the difference of uh, relief, meaning that um, you can analyze the flows, uh, both because of the uh, different uh, obstacles, and uh, you can analyze um, the wind, the flow of water uh, very, very clearly, and you really have a realistic context to adapt your design to this context that you cannot do very well in a, uh, in a drawing. And there we go. What uh, is very useful as well, it's, uh, it's very easily to modify. I want to, to change, I put here. I can modify very quickly. So it's really, uh, if you do a drawing on a 2D uh, paper, the problem is that every time you have to scratch everything, redo everything, it's very laborious. Here, very easy to modify. Huh? That's maybe the main advantage of this, uh, of this platform. And you can work on that uh, design in a collective way. Uh, everybody can sit around, you can talk about it, change things together. It's very about um, a systemic approach, uh, collective intelligence, uh, thinking together to find the best solution, the best design. So there is another big advantage is that because it's easy to modify, easy to set up, we will work as well in a, um, in the 4D uh, dimensions, because there will be time. Uh, we can uh, imagine a, a strategy of development, a kind of business process, a business uh, development. So saying that, okay, the first year we'll do that, then next year we'll do that, etc., etc. So it's much more realistic because when you have a, a paper with everything on, on top of it, you don't know exactly with what you will start. This way, you have a photography of each steps. Usually you do year one, year two, year three to have a good uh, plan to, strategic plan to, to build your site. There you can make a design year one with a set of resources, set of money, uh, year two, year three and so on. Uh, it's really the dynamic design. And because of this dynamic design, what happens is that you make a first design the, the first year, 
you make you make an evolution your two your three and then your four you ah but uh, it would be nice to do that and then you see that your prerequisite is not good you should have for example planted three uh, in your one to allow a certain functionality to be set up in your four so because it's easy to to go back you can go back to your one you add what you 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 forgot to, to put at uh, at for your one to prepare your four and so because of this easy way easy process to manage the platform you can develop something which is based on simulation it's not computer simulation it's manual situation uh, simulation but it gives you the possibility to try test come back uh, very easily to adapt to the situation so then you will have uh, in, in fine you will have really um, a plan which is very realis realistic because this year your one your two your three you will really do what you have to do before to pass to the next year and this is very important uh, to be really realistic on that and simulation is really one of the tools of systemic approach uh, complex system how to, uh, to make the best design based on a step by step approach to um, to let the system be built with uh, intelligence and with um, capacity to, to see your errors if there are some errors. In the teaching of permaculture or the way permaculture is, is done, usually uh, people focus too much on the function and not on the process. Uh, when you do an activity, it's really a, a set of, of steps. And before to optimize the function, first you need to, to see to to size, to optimize the full process. And then after you do for each function, once you know what will be the flows, what uh, you will have to do for the full activity, what you, span, you can span on each function, function and, and uh, then optimize the function. And this show really this, uh, this approach is that it's not about making a flat drawing uh, static that you don't really know where to start, uh, what to do first, etc. But really a process of building. Design is a process of building a site. Huh? It's not just making a drawing on a, on a paper. So this idea of um, process, dynamic vision of a design is very important. And on top of that, it's very fun. <laughs> this, this platform shows something, is that we can make do good design have good results with little resources. Uh, methodology, the methodology of uh, permaculture, systemic approach is a step per step uh, process where we don't need a lot of money, a lot of resources, but more we need to work with nature. Here the regeneration was done in 10 years time, now it's a forest, but you need to know what you are doing, you need to observe, you need to build this landscape to make something which will become abundant, uh, a fruit forest. So if you come here, we'll really show you a way, a methodology to build something without a lot of resources, because I think that permaculture is not about putting a lot of money, but it's more about following nature, observing nature, and orientate nature, and be included, integrated into nature. So if you want to contact us, don't hesitate, the contact is there. Uh, we have an Instagram, at Anova Floresta. Uh, you can contact us by email, contact us by WhatsApp, uh, Telegram, as you wish. And we'll be always there to, to, to answer to you and propose something. Could be volunteering, could be uh, really studying together. Uh, if you want to do a masterclass in tropical permaculture, hope to see you soon.